They say you never forget your first, and that's the case with me because I started my print on a man journey in 2016, 17, and I started with Society6. And other than the fact that this has been my first, there are two other reasons why I love Society6 so much. The second reason is the fact that their product quality is just insanely amazing. This hoodie that I've been wearing, I think, over a year now, and I've washed it a gazillion times, this is a desk mat from Society6. I do have this puzzle from Society6, which is my all-time favorite print on demand jigsaw puzzle when it comes to quality. And this little one here. Oh, not so little. I love this pillow so much. And the third reason why I just love Society6 so much is the fact that you can affiliate yourself. And that means that if I promote my products on social media, on a blog, and someone comes into Society6 to take a look at my products and they buy from someone else, I actually get commission for that too. So these are the three reasons why I love Society6. And I do know that a lot of people have been trying to get into Society6 and sell a bunch of stuff there, but have been kind of bamboozled, I guess, with the uploading process, with the sizes that they're gonna need, and how are they gonna promote all of these things. And that's why I'm making this video, to make it easier for you guys to see if Society6 is for you and uh, to have fun on the way. Let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mayo and I teach creative people how to sell their art online. And this video is all about Society6 print on demand platform, more focused on the pattern aspect of uploading and selling on Society6. I will be going over what is Society6 for the people who don't know this platform, what you can sell, the three types of design styles I think we can sell, and focus on the patterns. How do we make the patterns? What are the sizes to upload patterns? And I actually only need three sizes, which is brilliant. I'm gonna show you an uploading process to Society6 and then recap everything with tips for me on uploading, on the workflow, on how to get creative with certain aspects, on how to market your Society6 stores and some pros and cons comparing Society6 to other platforms. So let's get started with what is Society6. Society6 is a print-on-demand marketplace, which means that you're designing items that they already have on their platform, and when you design these items, they create a mock-up, a simulation of how the product would look like in real life. It doesn't cost any money to join Society6, and you can upload as many designs as you want. It's not like Etsy, where you have to pay 20 cents per listing, and you get paid using PayPal. How much will you get paid? Pretty much 10% other than the art items where you can price yourself separately, as well as a 10% affiliate commission or just a 10% affiliate commission if you chose to be a Society6 curator. It's pretty simple when you think about it. You upload your designs and if a buyer purchases anything, you get the commission and they create the item and ship it to the buyer. Now, what can you sell on Society6? And I'm not talking just about the products that they have because they do have some unique products like sunshades and yoga mats and shower curtains, as well as, of course, we are talking about the hoodies and the t-shirts and the all-over print t-shirt and even leggings and joggers with items for tech, such as phone cases, Beautiful desk mats. I just love this one so much. I don't know if you can even see it, but I love this one so much. And of course, pillows and bed sheets and so many other products, mugs, serving trays, and notebooks. The list goes on and on. But when I'm talking about what to sell on Society6, I actually mean three types of designs that you can sell on Society6. The first being text designs, which is something like this t-shirt over here that says more self-love on it that I'm selling on TeePublic. I can completely sell this t-shirt on Society6, but I chose to focus my Society6 store on different types of designs. The second type of design style that you can upload to Society6 is patterns. And when I say patterns, I don't necessarily mean seamless patterns because we don't have the multiplication option or the tiling option on Society6 like we have on Redbubble or on Zazzle. So these are large patterns that don't have to be seamless on the edges, but they have to be manufactured in some way. And we're going to be focusing more about that in today's video. And the third type of things to upload that I also upload is your own personal art. I will be making videos separately on text designs and art designs, but today we're going to be focusing on patterns. Now, how do you make patterns? Well, you can create patterns with any kind of design software that allows you to design or to draw. 
For example, Procreate, Photoshop, Illustrator, all kinds of cool iPad or desktop apps. You can also create art using Canva or Kittle or any kind of web app, but you're going to have to consider the fact that Society6 has insanely large sizes that, for example, you cannot reach with Canva. Now, these patterns that you're uploading to Society6 do not have to be seamless within themselves. However, if you have a seamless pattern that you've created, you can multiply it using something like Clip Studio Paint or Photoshop. I think there was a video about how to multiply patterns with Clip Studio Paint. I will leave a link to that one down below. But you can also create patterns with a software like Repper that allows you to create patterns and seamless patterns fairly easily in insanely large file sizes, like insanely large. A lot of people get stopped when it comes to uploading the different sizes for Society6 because they do have, for example, a certain aspect ratio for their canvases, a certain aspect ratio for a certain orientation when you're designing socks or when you're designing wall curtains, like full-on blackout and sheer curtains, amazing product. And you have to kind of navigate because all of them have so many different dimensions. And I do know people who constantly struggle. They just start uploading a file and then they realize, okay, I need another file and another file and another file. So if you feel like you really don't know the sizes, I really recommend having a notebook or a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil to write the sizes down that I'll be showing you in just a second. Because right now I'm going to open my computer. I'm going to go to Repper app. I'm going to create my pattern super, super easy, download it in only three sizes and upload it to Society6. And after that, as I mentioned in the beginning, we're going to be talking about marketing seamless patterns, some tips from me about workflow, pros and cons, and other stuff. So in order for me to get started, I just need to perform a small magic trick. And I'm small. And I'm right here on the Repper app which is an insanely good app to create patterns and seamless patterns. And actually what I need to do in order to make a pattern is to create the file that the app is going to draw from. And for that, I'm going to go to Canva and I'm saying this in advance. You don't need Canva Pro to do this. And I'm going to click on create a design, custom size. Let's go with 5,000 by 5,000 pixels. This is going to be the easiest thing you've ever done. I'm going to go to elements and I'm going to choose a square. And I'm going to take this square and I'm going to put it here. And now I need to think about a color palette. And oh my God, Canva added gradient colors. <laughs> this is so cool. I totally didn't see this coming. I can totally see a video on Canva upgrades, but okay. I'm going to choose something. Um, I don't know. I chose just gray. Let's duplicate this box. Maybe put in a different color of gray, like a dark gray. Let's take a shape. Let's take a shape like a circle and make it black and put one here and one here in a different color light blue yeah light blue and let's see what we're doing with our background i'm going to duplicate this again and color this in a darker pastel blue and position it all the way to the back and this is my design i know it doesn't look that much uh, maybe i want to add something else to it let's add a line Let's make it like this. I could have also just added another square, but this is really cool. And let's color the line in blue as well. And this is my design. I know it doesn't look as much, but you know what? Let's just download it as a PNG file. And I'm going to head over to the Repper app and start the app. Now, there was a full video just about Repper, and this is a paid tool. And we do have a discount for viewers of this channel using Repper. More details on that discount down below in the description. And I'm going to click on Add New Collection. I'm going to call this collection Society6 uh, Blue and Gray. And this is one of the things that I love about Repper because it coexists with the fact that, you know, you're creating collections and upload image. Oh, wow. I have so many images on my download folder from today. And I've uploaded this image. And as you can see, just from the beginning of it, it already opened itself up to this insane pattern. Now, I do have so many options when it comes to the tiling options of this pattern. Oh, wow. This is actually kind of cool. It's kind of tribal, I think. I really like the honeycomb. So I love this. I'm going to click on save snapshot. So basically it saves what I did here. I'm going to go down below. Let's see if it looks good. 
like this looks good. Let's add this. Let's choose another pattern. And we don't have to have the pattern become seamless on the edges because we are uploading the final result of our product. This is actually pretty cool. Oh, wow. I really missed wrapper. <laughs> I haven't done work with wrapper in a while and I kind of miss it all together. Oh, these are nice. These are really trippy, really trippy. Let's head over here, let's go with, oh, the Diamond Penrose is like one of my favorites. And the more you play around with this platform, the more you know kind of like what is the source file that you're gonna wanna have in order to create something that looks good. And I kind of like this. And I'm gonna save it, but I wanna continue on with this design that we've done in the beginning. Maybe I'm gonna create something with a little bit more black in it. Let's say this one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head to effects. We do have color adjustments, so I can make the design brighter or darker with more or less contrast. This is actually really good and saturated or desaturated. So I'm gonna stay with this. Let's save this one. And I can also create an effect around it that kind of looks like Instagram. You can also work with gradient colors that will basically hover over the colors I already have here, which could be a nice idea, but I don't want it for now. And the duotone, which is also one of my favorite features because I can literally input new colors here and just design something completely different. These can actually look really good. And I can control how much it affects the design. I think I like this one. I don't know what about blue. Yeah, let's do blue here and black here. This one is actually kind of cool. And we have Metamorphosis, which is my favorite one, which Metamorphosis is basically having the design. Let's, oh, what? What did I do? Let's go back here. I clicked on something, you know, like something, sometimes that just happens. Let's go back to Duotone. We'll go with blue and with black. It's actually so cool. Okay. I actually like this one better. <laughs> Who knew? And metamorphosis. Now, if I go a bit back, you can see that the pattern is basically, I don't know, collapsing on itself or moving. And with metamorphosis, I can also control how far along it goes and if it's on the other side. So, for example, if I have a vertical one or a horizontal one, these actually look really trippy, as well as a circular one. For example, there is a circle inside and it spans out which is also kind of cool and i'm going to actually play with this while i'm downloading this design in three different sizes i'm going to go to export and make sure that you're on png for the large file sizes i'm going to click on custom and i'm going to write here 9400 by 9400 pixels 9000 thank you that is the first size 9400 by 9400 and I'm going to make the design repeat itself multiple times. So I'm going to get that really circular effect. This looks brilliant. And I'm exporting this one. Let's call it uh, S6 test one, just for the sake of this. Obviously, you need to save it in real names and the names of the design you want to call it. This is so cool. I mean, if you consider the original thing that I made, the original design that I made, this is like what? some circles and some squares and the actual design is, looks like flowers collapsing on themselves which i feel like this will be the name that i'm going to call it the second size is going to be 7500 by 12,000 pixels and obviously you can play around with how many times this design repeats itself or not based on how much you want it to collapse but this thing i think i'm going to go with something that kind of touches on the edges and export this one too let's call it test two and going over to my last size that I'm going to need right after it finishes with 15,000 by 6,000. These are the three sizes. Now in this case, I do not like how this looks. I'm going to go with the effects and I'm going to change the metamorphosis to be linear, not circular. Let's go in the vertical scope, maybe a bit in and out. Let's go to export and reduce the amount of repeats that we have to basically like open up the design a little bit more. And here I can also adjust it to be lower, to be higher. Let's go back to our effects with amorphosis, work on this perhaps. Yeah, 
I make it like that and export calling it as test three. And now that we have our three sizes, we're going to head over to Society6. We're going to click on cell. We're going to have to have a profile in Society6, granted, and click on add new design. And in this case, what you're going to do is that you're going to take all three of these designs and upload all three of them. This is the part where you might want to go and grab a cup of coffee, especially if your internet is not really fast because Society6 is known for having very long uploading times, mostly because the files that we're uploading are huge and weigh so much. Now, I'm almost done with uploading them, and as you can see, one of them was selected to be the featured one. The featured one is the one that people can see if they just look at the design file, but it's also the one that the system is going to think, hey, I'm going to use it for most, for most of the design. So I'm going to select the square one, the one by one ratio, 9400 pixel by 9400 pixels. And here I have to enter a design name. Now, I kind of felt when I was looking into Repper that these are like flowers collapsing on themselves. So let's call it collapsing flowers in blue. I like that name and head on to continue. I represent that I have the rights to use this. This is something that I have the right to use. I made it and it does not contain any kind of mature content. Obviously only mark this no if it really doesn't have any mature content. And we're proceeding. Now the next thing we're gonna see is basically the most time consuming thing, which is the three files that I upload are currently gonna load themselves onto this platform, onto so many different products, and it will take them such a long time to actually load. As you can see, a lot of them are gray, and this is my internet speed at the moment, which is why I couldn't work when I was in Greece that much, and why I think that I'll be doing these uploads when I'm at a co-working space, where I have 150 mega and not 40 or 30 uploading speed. I'm gonna head back to Society6, and as you can see, some of these were already sort of uploaded, some of these were not, and we're gonna talk about individual products. Now, when it comes to patterns, a lot of people won't upload wall art. I think that it's kind of cool. I'm gonna start with the mini art prints. The mini art prints are like really mini. They're like eight inches by eight inches, and I'm gonna make sure that the design that was chosen is the one by one ratio, and I'm going to scale this design all the way up and just, you know, put it at some point. Save and enable, and I'm gonna do the same with the mini art print, choosing the one by one ratio, because I want the one by one ratio card, and upscaling this design. The recessed frame is something that I don't think I will activate. We do have the floating acrylic print, which looks kind of cool, so I'm gonna activate that one. The framed canvas, I actually do like how it looks, as well as the art print. The framed art print, I'm not sure I like these design measurements. Maybe something like this would be better, even though it's going to show like in the middle of it because their frames are not so, I don't know, versatile, I guess. And we cannot really play around with, I don't know, the aspect ratio here or how deep it is. So I'm going to choose to deactivate this one. I activated the canvas print, the metal print, the poster. I think we will need to edit. I'm going to go and make this maybe a bit bigger save and enable and we also have the wood wall art which is a really unique product it's basically nine wooden plates that i really love we have the wall hanging that i activate the sheer curtains oh my god they look so good and the blackout curtains and here we have the sheer curtains and blackout curtains and in this case you will only see one file here and the reason why you'll only see one file here is because out of the three files that we uploaded only this file is good for the sheer curtains and i think i'm gonna maybe make it a tiny bit bigger, save and enable, and, and go back and continue. And yes, this process can be exhausting. Wall tapestry, let's activate. Throw pillow, rectangular pillow. Notice that it takes a little bit of time to activate it. Wall mural, wall clock. Um, the wallpaper I'm not gonna activate because it's not seamless in its own. I really like the throw blend in it. The rug looks really good. I'm thinking, the coffee table looks good, the bench, the bar stool. These are such unique products. Side table, the credenza looks amazing. Duvet cover, shower curtain, comforter, hand and bath towel, bath mat, pillow shams. We have the wine chiller. This actually looks really good. The water bottle, the tablecloth. And again, I can enter each and every one of them if I want to design them separately, if I want to move the print around. The coaster is actually a really unique product on Society6 that I really like because it took my design and basically made it on top of four different ones. But I can also repeat the same coaster multiple times, but I do like this kind of effect. Let's save and enable. And yeah, every time it's going to load the screen all over again, 
This process can be exhausting, but I feel like the minute that you already have those sizes that you know are going to be good, then the process becomes much easier. This jigsaw puzzle is gonna be really trippy. So let's try to expand it. Maybe if we can use like less of the pattern inside the jigsaw puzzle, that could be a good idea. Let's expand it all the way through and maybe take it to one of the sides. Let's center it here. And this would be my jigsaw puzzle. I actually like that one. Really, really, really. I really like that jigsaw puzzle. I kind of want to do it now. It's one of the hardest, like I really love jigsaw puzzles so that are patterns, even though they're extremely difficult. Wrapping paper sheets, the desk mat looks good, the notebook looks really cool. We have stationary cards and stickers, which I don't think I'm gonna wanna activate in this case because it makes no sense. Let's go with all of our Apple and Android products. It's really weird that they call it an Android card case because Android is not a phone. It's an operating system, but fine. Ooh, the all over print t-shirt looks really cool. The fanny pack looks cool. And now, sweatpants, full zip hoodies, and crew wrench sweatshirt. I'm not gonna activate because the design is like here. It's not uh, something that is okay with patterns. And that's the thing, I, I'm, I don't mind that. We will be showing how to design these products when we'll be talking about the Society6 art and the Society6 text designs in future videos. And as you can see, the socks, this is a pretty interesting product because if I thought about socks, I would think that the design would be vertically aligned covering the socks, when in fact, the design is extremely horizontal, featuring the left foot and the right foot. And because I like collapsed the design on top of itself, it sort of created this effect where both of the socks are gonna be different. And yes, it's annoying that every time you activate something, it goes back on top and now you can't see it. Face masks, is that still a thing? Backpacks looks amazing. Tote bags, I like. Duffel bag, I like. Again, the t-shirts, I'm not gonna go for. Leggings, yes. These look super trippy. This looks like kind of a DNA sequencing kind of thing. Not so much flowers collapsing. Welcome mat, can cooler, folding stool, picnic blanket, all the big ticket items, outdoor rug, sunshade, outdoor floor cushion, the sling chair. Kind of want to go to the beach right now. Yoga towel, yoga mat, beach towel, and down here we have kids items that I'm not going to update, mostly because, you know, they're all like centered prints, just like the grown-ups. And now that I finished with this process, I am going to go and choose my category. This is graphic design. And they suggest tags. So we have digital, we have pattern. Let's go with pop art, blue, dark blue, light blue. People often search by color when they search for home decor items. Flowers, let's write also floral. Mm, cute. I'm really drawing a blank here, but yeah, that's okay. I'm not gonna really bank on keywords. And now I have collapsing flowers in blue. Description, uh, unique pattern yeah morphs flowers uh, on the surface i don't even know what i'm doing just a way to describe it and i represent that i have that the title tags and description of my artwork including the names titles and brands are fully mine so for example do not write disney and publish this artwork and now for a lot of people, this will be like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> but in fact, this is how it's supposed to be. And we can click here to go and share this product. Every product that we see, we can share. However, we can also go to one. Let's go on share, click on copy link, and open this link in a new tab. And this is how a product page looks like if you're going to send people directly to this product page. So these are the sheer window curtains that we have here. People can select several sizes. They can also order two or a single one. And right below, they will see your profile with other sheer curtains. So this is a sheer curtain. They will see other sheer curtains that you designed, other of the same product, different designs by you. They will also see other sheer curtains by other designers. And then they will see other items you designed using the same design. And here you obviously see X, Society6 takes actually a long time to load, even within the platform. Under that, the buyer will see recent review. There will be related searches for pattern shear curtains, basically on my tags, explore more products. And under here, my curator link, my affiliate link, which if I want to promote this item, 
I will actually provide this link so that I'll be able to get money even if someone doesn't buy directly from me. Let's check out the other 79 products. And it took a bit of time to load, but as you can see, this was my featured image. So it's featured here and we can see the products here. Let's click on view all. Oh my God, they're so pretty. <laughs> can I just look at it? They're so pretty. I just like them so much. The table runner came out amazing. The socks, as you can see, inside and out look a bit differently. The throw blanket looks really nice. The sling chair, these are really unique products and I'm really loving it. I feel like I just want to look at it forever and design more and more items. But the thing is that a lot of people get stuck with, how are you supposed to market this? Am I supposed to count on the fact that 12,000 people are going to go to size six and search for blue collapsing flowers? Probably not. So how do I actually market? these patterned items. Is Society6 better than Redbubble and Zazzle? Maybe it's not. So pros and cons kind of thing. And what should be my workflow? I will go over all that with you, but first I'm going to make myself bigger and ask you that if so far you like this video or found this content useful, please hit the like button down below because every time you do that, believe it or not, it really does help my channel and subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. So how do we market patterns? I mean, we have all these cool designs. How do we market patterns? And when I talk about how to market patterns, there are two levels or aspects or, I don't know, different types of marketing that we're talking about. The first is the medium of marketing. Am I going to market it on social media, Pinterest, Instagram? Am I going to market it on Facebook? Am I going to open a blog to it? And the second is what is going to be the niche? or the topic when it comes to marketing my product. Now, whether you're going to choose to basically promote these designs on Instagram, on Pinterest, on Facebook, on Reddit, on your own blog, you first need to understand what is your second marketing niche idea. Because you can just go with marketing a pattern, for example, create an account for a pattern store, or create an account for you as a surface or a pattern artist, and market things basically featuring the same pattern on different items for people who like patterns. The second aspect of marketing or niche marketing when it comes to selling patterns on Society6 would be to market a specific type of product. The first topic can actually be everything for the bedroom. So in that case, I'll be marketing bed sheets, I'll be marketing wall art, I'll be marketing shower curtains and things that go in the bedroom. I can also choose to market everything that goes into the bathroom, like I'm doing with my new website that I'm really working on finishing the tutorial for that and how to create a blog for that. But I chose to focus on anything for the bathroom for that website and marketing my Society6 and my Zazzle store at the same time, including your stores and Etsy stores and more on that at the end of this video. You can also choose to create the topic of everything for tech or office. And in that case, you'll have things like the Apple Watch band, the disc mat, as well as phone cases and even things like notebooks. You can also choose to make a small gift shop. You can also choose to do living room decor with the curtains and the throw pillows and even create a store about things that people can wear, for example, the leggings, the socks, and the all over print t-shirts. The thing is that you can also narrow it down more and literally just market one item. Make a full marketing profile or a blog or a Pinterest account on leggings, on pattern leggings for women. You can also do a full Pinterest account on socks, a full Pinterest account on table runners or on wine chillers or on yoga mats, yoga mats and yoga towels. So the options are really in your hand. And if you want to ask why would you just market one thing, I mean, I just did this process and I upload to a bunch of stuff. Why would I just market shower curtains or why would I just market leggings? The answer to that is actually quite simple. Society6 promotes artists and helps them share their creativity and art online and helps them get paid. If you think that, then you probably don't know what Society6 is because Society6 is a business. The same as Redbubble, the same as Zazzle, the same as Tee Public. This is a business that is made to make money. It's going to recommend designs that the platform thinks can sell. It's going to show the buyer something that the platform thinks has a good chance of making a sale. Because if the buyer is not going to buy, the platform is not going to make money. And for that reason, if you bring in your own traffic and people purchase from you or even purchase with your link, the platform is going to like you more. 
the platform is going to go like, oh, people are buying this design on leggings. Maybe I should push this design up if someone is searching something related to it. So the more you bring your own traffic in and the more you bring your own sales in, the more the actual platform is going to do the marketing for you and promote you within their platform. Now, if you think that the need to do marketing is only because you're on Society6, you're wrong. I know so many people who are like, you know, Society6, you need to do your own marketing, so I'm on Redbubble. And you think you don't have to do your own marketing on Redbubble? Seriously? You think that if someone searches something, Redbubble is going to make 2,000 designs appear as the first search result? Well, it's literally impossible. You do have to market yourself no matter what platform you're on. We have a Pinterest marketing tutorial coming up really soon. Super excited about that, along with a blog video that will soon come up as well to tie up that marketing for you. But let's move on to a little bit of a pros and cons section. And I'm thinking about maybe comparing it to Redbubble or TeePublic or Zazzle, for example. So the cons of Society6 is that you can't really design anything on the platform itself. It's not like I can upload something and then add a background to it, like on TeePublic or Redbubble or Zazzle. It's not like I can upload a seamless pattern and then duplicate it or tile it on top of the actual product. I really do need to have these insanely large sizes when it comes to selling on Society6. There's no tiling option. I have to have the end result. I cannot add a background later to it. And that is a bit of a con of Society6. The second con is that Society6 doesn't actually inform you when you make a sale. I literally have to log in and see if I made a sale, which for some people can be annoying. But for me, I don't know. I, I feel like I don't want to get notified every time I'm making a sale because these emails are kind of like taking me out of focus. So I really don't have a problem to go in, I don't know, on a weekly basis and see if something is selling. You also don't have analytics, which is a major con. Like I, I literally cannot see how many people have entered my platform. So for example, if you made one sale, you don't know if that's good or bad because you don't know if 2000 people looked at your product and only one person purchased or if two people looked at your product and one person purchased, which is amazing. Like you don't know your conversion rate when it comes to that. But I feel like in a way it also simplifies things for artists who don't really understand how to read the statistics. But again, yeah, that's a major con that you can't even look at your own analytics. The process of uploading is super slow. Uh, maybe if you compare it to Zazzle, it's not that slow because on Zazzle you just design each product on its own, but definitely comparing to Redbubble and TeePublic. This is an incredibly slow process, again, because we have all these file sizes and for some reason their website is so slow. There is also this annoying thing where if you go into a product, it won't fully load the photo just yet. So if you do want to market something, you're going to have to wait anything like two, three days for the photo of the mockup to actually save or try to load the page multiple times. We do have a lot of cons for Society6, but we do have a lot of pros for Society6. On Society6, you can easily affiliate yourself with that curator link that I showed you. And actually, if you join the Society6 curator program, you can actually affiliate and design on the platform with a simple link. And the commission will be paid to you along with your own commission and one PayPal payment. They pay with PayPal. They have home decor items, which is a pro for me. I mean, if you're into designing t-shirts, Maybe Society6 is not that much for you, even though, again, we can design t-shirts and hoodies with Society6 and there will be videos about that. But again, this is a platform that is more focused on other products like the home decor items, the yoga mask, we have the wrapping paper, we have wall murals, shower curtains. They have sheer curtains and blackout curtains, which even Zazzle doesn't have. And Zazzle has like 1500 products. So they do have unique products to them. I love that they have the table runners and the sunshades. I feel like a lot of these items are like very seasonal when they're being purchased because, you know, people go and actually search for table runners before holiday seasons and sunshades, well, before the summer. They do have cool socks and they have clocks, so they kind of have all the basic items that you have on Redbubble and TeePublic, plus so many other products, even the credenzas and the tables, which are pretty much insane. On top of that, we also have the fact that they do have high quality items. And I do like the fact that when I recommend something, it's going to come in really good quality. And I hate the fact that I can recommend something and it's going to be not good. I can't even think about it. For me, I really want to have that control. And seriously, this is my favorite puzzle out of all print and demand supplier, which is also another thing that you can market. You can just market pattern puzzles on their own. So 
I do like the fact that their products have such a high quality and there is something that is kind of a con that to me is a pro and that is the slow uploading process and the requirement for high file sizes, for large file sizes, because that makes the platform have less people. And I'm not saying that, you know, I'm competing with other people in a lot of the things that I do, but definitely you will find less people coming to Society6 to sell, less people who are flooding the platform with the junk. And again, I don't mean less competition because the people who will sell on Society6 will sell amazing patterns. Sometimes I won't even be able to make these kind of amazing patterns or art myself. And other people here sell far better looking items than I do. However, there won't be this amount of spam that you see on Redbubble. So many people who just upload junk text designs and just tag them with random things. And the reason why this bothers me is because if you're a buyer and you end up on Redbubble and you type in something for a sticker and you get completely white stickers or you search for a t-shirt and you get completely different results, you're probably not going to use Redbubble anymore. And with Society6, I feel like when you go to Society6 and you search for something as a buyer, you actually find it. So to me, the shopping experience on Society6 is much better than the shopping experience with Redbubble. And for the reason of the shopping experience, I would like to give you two tips when it comes to designing and uploading your products. The first is to actually create collections, like to create products that are similar to each other. So I made this blue pattern. I'm also going to click on the duotone and create the same pattern in green. I can create the same pattern in blue because sometimes people just want that specific shade when it comes to home decor or they want to mix and match. So for example, they would want a bed set in one of the colors and the pillow in a different one or one curtain in this color and one curtain in the other color. So do work on your collections, move this thing around and really form collections, which is again, one of the reasons I really like working with Repper because you can really organize this on their platform when it comes to collections and types of art that you're making. The other tip that I will give you is to be creative with a name. I mean, this whole collapsing flowers in blue, is one of my favorite designs because I feel like when it comes to the shopping experience, especially when you're talking about art, people are really into, you know, the whole naming. So I also have this design that I uploaded this morning that is called Pink Diamonds in Motion, which by the way, I also made using Repper. And I really recommend that you use interesting design names. And again, these design names can also lead to my collection. So I have the collapsing flowers in blue, I will have the collapsing flowers in brown and green and red, and the pink diamonds in motion could have easily been, I don't know, purple diamonds in motion or black and white diamonds in motion and really go over these colors because I think that you don't really understand just how much people who are looking for home decor items would look for a specific color. So again, work with collection and create an interesting name to each collection and to each product. Now, when it comes to the workflow of Society6, you can basically do what I did. You go to Repper, you create a design, and I'm going to say it again, 9400 by 9400 pixels, 7500 by 12,000 pixels, and 15,000 by 6,000 pixels are the sizes that I chose when it comes to patterns on Society6. You can go, you can create these designs, basically creating the collection, downloading three or four sets of them, and uploading them onto Society6. However, as I mentioned, it does take time for all the photos to fully load up. So from the second time you do that, I recommend actually going on the platform after you've uploaded three sets of designs or three designs or one, whatever you have the time to do, go to the one or to the three that you previously upload and create Pinterest pins from them to promote on Pinterest. And when I'm saying this, I'm also going to remind you there will be a Pinterest full tutorial coming up hopefully this week. I'm finalizing my blogging tutorial as well as two more videos coming up at the end of this month and the beginning of the next about Society6 when it comes to selling art and Society6 when it comes to selling text designs because all of these have different sizes or requirements. And I'm also going to mention again that I was using Repper app and there was a full video explaining how to use the Repper app and you can go ahead and check it out or check out the description down below for a special discount for channel members for the Repper app. And now I'm done. This has been a long filming video, especially when it comes to the uploading process, which obviously I kind of edited out some parts where the computer was like, 
thinking too much, the computer, Society6 was thinking too much. But I hope that you enjoyed this video and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below about Society6. Are you on Society6? Have you tried? Are you selling your own art? Are you selling patterns? Are you selling text designs? How are you marketing it? And anything you want to tell me about Society6 or this tutorial. Last but not least, and right before I finish this video, I would like to touch up on that marketing aspect and that affiliating yourself aspect for another 60 seconds, if you'll allow me. Number one, there was a full video about the combination of print on demand and affiliating yourself, and you can go ahead and check it out. Now, I really like that concept. I really like the fact that I can recommend my own products in my own blog, and if someone clicks on them and buys from someone else, I'll get commission. And when I started working on the idea of my bathroom decor website, I also have a curtain decor website I'm working on, but when I started working on them, I thought to myself, you know what, if it's really hard for me to create this like nautical anchor shower curtain thing, I don't have to create it. I can just go to Society6 or to Zazzle or to Etsy. I'm an affiliate of all these platforms and I'm just going to affiliate someone who's making it. And I can do that as an affiliate. I can go to anyone who's selling anything relating to showers or to bathrooms or to any topic on Society6, on Etsy or on Zazzle and promote their products on my website. However, I thought to myself, I have currently 32,000 people following this channel, subscribed to this channel. Thank you, by the way. That's insane. I didn't believe that I will reach 32,000 people in like two years. So thank you. But I thought to myself, why am I recommending strangers when I can recommend you guys? And that's when I made a video offering to advertise your stores for free. So if you're selling shower curtains, bath mats, or even shower bath decor posters on Society6, Zazzle, or Etsy, I do want to market your stores and I have a video that explains the whole thing. If you are interested in checking out this promotion opportunity, go ahead and check out that video about free advertising. And last but not least, before we go, I would like to remind you that we do have a channel challenge that I issued myself in the month of February to design 20 minutes a day, 150 days straight. I will be giving another update on how it's going on the April goals video. There was an update on the March goal video. This has helped me with shiny new thing syndrome so much. And I really think that if you want to take like, for example, to start on Society6 and take yourself seriously, you can definitely take on that challenge and basically spend 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes a day designing for Society6 or designing Pinterest bins for your existing products or if you're selling on any kind of platform. I highly recommend you watch that video next and take on the challenge with us. If you have decided to take on the challenge with us, please comment on the challenge video, the date that you started the challenge. And I don't know, I feel like this is a great way to keep ourselves accountable, I guess. But with that being said, that was it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new. And as usual, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.